Good afternoon, everybody. We're here at the Barking Deer in Mumbai, and we're here to have a tour of the brewery. Uh, with us is Greg, uh, the head of a brewery. What are we gonna do today? Hi, I'm Greg. Greg Kreutz. I'm the. Uh, I like to call myself the chief barking officer of the uh, Barking Deer. We're doing beer school today, so I'm the uh, temporary headmaster of beer school. So we we've done. Uh, a nice event already. We've been tasting beer. We've been uh, talking about the history and the culture of beer, uh, we, what goes into beer, how beer is made. So everything beer right now. Now we're doing a tour of the brewery. So all my students are going to be coming back with us and we're going to be looking at the brewery. And what's even more fun, there's actually uh, a, uh, a brew going on right now. We're actually in the middle of the boil. So. Uh, all the students are going to come back into a hot, steamy brewery uh, with all the, the smells and the fun of what's going on there. So, I guess, are we ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. So, everybody, students, come. Come on back. Okay, everybody come on in. So, welcome everybody. Welcome uh, Facebook audience. Uh, if uh, you all could come on through and come on, come on in, more people. Yeah, welcome. Uh, We've done a few uh, live brews on on uh, Facebook Live, uh, but really happy that uh, HT is here with us. Uh, and we're doing beer school here at the Barking Deer, and we're in uh, uh, in uh, uh, we're in the brewery right now, and we're going to be talking about uh, how beer is made. And uh, and actually, we're in the middle of a brew. We're actually do brewing an IPA today. So. Uh, how we start out, we start out with uh, grains. And we like to call our uh, be uh, beer making here a grain to glass process. It starts off with you know really beautiful grains. This is uh, our barley malt. Uh, our IPA, our, barking, our bark IPA uh, starts off with uh, three types of malt. Pale malt, roasted malt, and wheat malt to add a little bit of a body. So what happens is we crush the malt in a grinder and we add it to this uh, kettle here, which is a mash tun. And I'll show you uh, right now, we've already gone through the process where we have added water and uh, all of the uh, water has seeped through the grain bed and all of the sugars from the grain bed has been, have been extracted from this bed of uh, barley malt. So all of it has been rinsed, I would say rinsed out of the bed of grains. And we pump that over to the boil kettle. And you can see right here that we have an active boil going on. And uh, let me see if I can open this up. And we can bring the camera up here and see a really active boil going on, which is exciting. So uh, where are we in the process, guys? Uh, my, my two uh, trusty brewers, Abhishek and Abhishek, uh, where, where, where are we in the process? Have we uh, added any hops yet? Yes, we added the 30 minutes and the 15 minutes hops. Okay, so, mm. the th and the 15 minute hops. Yeah. So what happens in the brewing process is we add hops all through the boil, and hops are doing different things. Uh, if you add it, in the uh, first part of the boil, it's more for bittering. Throughout the boil, adding flavors. And then uh, near the end of the boil, it's more for aroma. So here we have our Cascade hops. You can see what that looks like. This is gonna be added uh, in about 10 minutes. This will be added to the boil in about 10 minutes. And that will be really nice. That's gonna add some nice, nice flavors and aromas. So once this boil is completed, um, what happens is we let it sit for a while. Uh, we let all sort of the sediments settle to the bottom. 
and then we do what's called knockout. We pump the beer out of the boil kettle. We quickly chill it through a, what's called a heat exchanger. And then uh, we pump it to one of these four fermenters here. Today, we're gonna be pumping it to the fermenter right behind you, right behind the camera. This is fermenter num trusty fermenter number one. Uh, and it <laughs> there it is, yeah, that's the one. It's empty right now. It's been cleaned. It's been sterilized. Most important thing. And I wanted to say that, um, that in, the, in boiling, uh, what's really important is we're sterilizing the wort. We're sterilizing the, the barley sugar water so that it's a sterile environment to add the yeast, right? So we add yeast to this, at this point into, the, uh, into our fermenter. And we're, we're, we'll be doing that. We'll be actually transferring this in about what in about an hour we'll be transferring the beer we'll be yeah. Not, yeah. not knocking out the, the beer into the fermenter in about an hour and then we'll be what we call pitching the yeast the yeast will sit in this fermenter for uh, about 10 days and it'll be fermenting for about 10 days uh, and it'll be the yeast will be chewing up the sugar producing alcohol and flavors and co2 and um, and it, during that time the sugar levels will go down the alcohol levels will go up, flavors will change, and pretty soon we'll have this beautiful beer that will transfer out of this fermenter to one of the holding tanks here. And those holding tanks are for two things, clarification and carbonation. Uh, and then the other uh, K is kegging. After, uh, after that, we, we uh, Abhishek, why don't you hold up a keg? So we, we, we keg our beer in these and then uh, that's put under the bar and uh, served out of those kegs. So that's into the glass. I don't have a glass with beer, but if I did, I would say the grain to glass process. So um, we, ha we get a lot of questions here about what goes on back here in the brewery. Uh, we, we laugh, of, of some of them, uh, you know, like they ask like, when do you add the alcohol? alcohol's not added <laughs> you know it's like it's a it's a natural process the yeast actually makes alcohol it's not like we add vodka to the beer to make beer right I mean it's it's a natural process uh, the other one that really baffles me is when people say what temperature do you boil your your wort at it's like well that's the te one temperature 100 degrees <laughs> so anyway yeah, it's, it's a bo we boil the beer and that's very important or the pre-beer uh, so and then we, but what I think is most important is some people ask, so, you know, yes, you make the beer here, but where does it come from? Where, where, are you have it shipped in from somewhere else? It's like, no, no, it's here. We make it all here. The process goes all of about 20 feet from here to the bar. So, you know, it is most natural organic, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not getting damaged by any transportation. There's no preservatives in the beer because we don't have to take it anywhere. It's only being made here and served here. Any, any questions from the students? Uh, somebody on Facebook is asking how much time does the whole process take? It depends on the... Any other questions any, from our Facebook friends? Some people are throwing in names like Kingfisher and Beera. How different is the process of craft? Okay. Um, the the uh, process of making beer, of making Beera or Kingfisher, I mean, it's basically the same. Although, let's distinguish. Beera uh, is an ale, typically. It's a, they, they, they have, the, let's say, their wheat beer, that's an ale. Kingfisher is a lager, two different yeasts, slightly different fermentation processes. That, that, that's all that is. But, but what's different about, but the process of making the beer is the same. However, what might be different about some of these more industrial beers or commercial beers is they have to do, do some things in their process to preserve the beer. They have to because they have to transport the beer. Um, so they might do one or one of two things or both things. One thing they definitely do is pasteurize the beer. And what does that mean, pasteurizing? It means taking the finished pro product and raising the temperature to a near boil to kill off 
any sort of active active cultures in the beer and that helps preserve the beer but what else does that do that can also kill flavor right because it yeah I mean you, you're you can actually um, denature the flavor of the beer by doing that we don't have to do that here uh, and the other thing they might add a preservative like glycerin there's been a lot of talk of that and and that's that uh, glycerin is basically a byproduct of uh, it's it comes from animal or uh, uh, or uh, yeah, fat, basically fat from either oils or animal fat, and it's uh, when you when you separate fat, you get lye and glycerin. So they add this. So it's a it's a natural preservative, but I mean I don't know if I'd really want to be drinking it. Uh, so we have an interesting <laughs> question. If you know if you approach this as a layman, you think of a whiskey, and you think of you know the longer it's stored, uh, and you know or wine for instance. The more time you give it, the better it tastes. Okay. Is that true for beer? That's a that's a good question. So, um, I, what what maybe I'll backtrack a little bit, saying we're at Barking Deer Beer School today for people on Facebook <laughs> that are a little bit late in joining. Uh, I'm Greg Kreutz. I'm the uh, founder of Barking Deer, and the question was, what about aging beers? Is aging beer is just like aging whiskey or you know scotches and whatnot? And once again, like most things in life, it depends. Some, some beers do really well with aging and should be aged, and some beers should be consumed fresh. So like, once again, I'll bring up the example of our Barking Deer Belgian Wit. That is a fresh beer. That should be consumed right after it's, it's been brewed. It's, it's ready it, because it a has like actually active culture and ac active flavor in the beer. If, if you let it sit too long, you lose some of that. You lose some of that zest. However, bigger beers, maybe more robust flavor, uh, uh, bigger in alcohol, those tend to do very well with aging. So like, let's say, these are styles maybe not everybody's familiar with, but they're really beautiful styles. Barley wines, scotch ales, uh, uh, double IPAs, imperial stouts. Those are higher in alcohol, many times bigger in flavor, um, higher in sugar content too they can be but they will age really nicely so I've had beer I had a I brewed a scotch ale uh, a homebrew and I let it sit in my refrigerator for two years and it came out and it was just perfect it was beautiful yeah. two years it was aged for yeah yeah it was really nice what's the maximum you would eat any, any beer um I, I think yeah you can brew you can age beers for, for years and, and I there's a lot of um we don't do this here, but there are breweries that will um, barrel age beers, where they'll take barrels like from maybe uh, wine uh, wineries or Scotch barrels, and they'll put their beer in there, and they will uh, let them age, let 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 the uh, flavors mellow, or even they might do a sour beer. And when you when you age these in, in a barrel that the sours can turn out really nicely and they typically will age for a year in a barrel typically in some of these these barrel aged beers which are really nice any questions my students uh, you said about the pasteurization so do you use flash uh, pasteurization like once you heat it up and then suddenly cool it to not lose the aromas no we don't do any of that okay, that's we we do no pasteurization because we, um, we don't have to transport it. Uh -huh. And once our beer is made, we keep it cool. We keep it down to under five degrees Celsius to preserve the, preserve the beer, right? We don't, we don't want the beer to ever get back up to room temperature again. Um, and nor any, worse yet, exposed to light or to air. That's, that would be the worst. But temperature can definitely ruin the flavor of a beer. Um, so we don't have to do any of that because we because we we you keep our bottle. beer cold you don't we don't bottle our beer we don't exactly. bottle. We, we just serve kegs here and very soon we'll probably be distributing our because keg beer uh, outside in, in, uh, other than India they bottle craft beer uh, yes 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 of course yeah. so if you say about Vermont they bottle <coughs> so many craft so, some, some craft beers some, do yeah. some pasteurization and others they, they don't, yeah. they don't. So they, they, then they have to make sure that they have a reliable cold chain transportation system where they're keeping their beers cool. So yeah, that's a good question.
Regarding a question on what the best thing to eat with pure is. Burgers? <laughs> French fries? <laughs> No, I mean anything. I'm mean really anything. Anything you like will match well with beer. Um, beer is highly versatile. Um, in fact, I like to think that beer is actually much more versatile and better to drink with food than even wine. And, you know, wine, you have your pairings. And we at the Barking Deer like to think that we have beer pairings as well. We like to pair our beer with, with food. So like our, our light beer, like a, a Belgian wit, goes really nice with fish or pasta, um, our, our bigger beer like our IPA, which is uh, more bitter and bolder, that, would, that pairs really well with Mexican foods, spicy foods, Indian foods. So um, beer goes with most anything. But I suppose, I mean, traditionally, right, it's just it's uh, beer and a burger and steak or uh, barbecue, always good, but most anything. You just... It, I guess you can, in pairing, you can either look at are the flavors similar or are they really different where you can add, where, where they'll kind of um, offset each other. You can, and it, it's like, it's, so it can get very like uh, culinarily sophisticated in that way. But what would you pair with uh, spicy Indian food? Yeah, I w IPAs. But you could also do a nice, um, like a, a blonde or a, like a Belgian uh, a saison or something. I, um, yeah, I mean, so, something that would uh, hold, I mean, I, I guess the way I look at it, it has to be a pretty strong, robust beer that holds up to the strong flavors. Yeah, the, the bitter, more robust beers go better with the, the Indian spices. Yeah, certainly. And, yeah, let's do that. Let's do some beer pouring. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. We're uh Okay, so I'm teaching both our Facebook audience. Once again, to the Facebook audience, we're at Barking Deer Beer School. Uh, we're almost done with our, uh, our beer school training today. We've gone through a nice presentation. Uh, we just did our tour of the brewery where we were doing, uh, we were looking at actually brewing in process. And uh, the last bit is gonna be actually learning how to pour beer. So when you pour beer, I'm gonna pour the Kolsch our kick-ass Kolsch, which will come out. It's, it's, it's a nice, clear, clean, crisp beer, which will be nice in color so we can see that. What if um, you don't tell people what beer it is only guess? We can do that, we can do that later, sure. But it's, it's hard to see that. Anyway, um, so the Kolsch, um, yeah, so it, it's a German beer. So basically the, the way you pour beer uh, is you start with a tilted glass. You don't want to put you don't want to put the tap up and touch the glass. You want to have it a little bit lower, and then when you pour, this is, uh, once it gets up near the top, you can slowly make it level like that. Typically, you want about two fingers of frothy head on it, so that one looks pretty good. Pour a little bit more to get that. Look at that. That looks good, right? A little dripping off the side. So maybe what we'll do is we'll let uh, a few students come up and try that. How about that? Who wants to who wants to pour a beer? Yeah, come. So uh, here, let me get a let me get a glass. This one. I'll get it. I get it. I get it. Okay. So so you tilt the glass. You're gonna do the honey whip. Yeah, it starts from here, right? Like that, yeah. And like a 45 degree angle. Don't let the, uh, you pull it all the way back. And then tilt it back. So. It's not as easy as Too much up <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as easy. Th th this one could be a little bit more high. It's fine though, look. Well, oh yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Try, try, 
get another glass and try pouring the Kolsch because I think that's less carbonated. It just could be very carbonated. Oh, you need IPA? Okay. No, that's fine. Okay, wheat beer. This is the Belgian wit. So all the way back, don't let it touch the glass. Can put it up. Okay. <laughs> just let, but, but you know, you can typically, you can just let it sit. Some of my guys, when they get busy, they sort of like pour some of the, the, the um, foam out and keep pouring. But you wanted the, the honey wit, right? So we can pour a little bit of... So once it settles down, we can pour it much. Yeah, you, you can pour it a yeah. little bit more once it settles. Oh, that's fine. That'll work. Yes, please. But you have to drink the beer if you pour it. Okay, so pick your beer. This is, uh, you can't see from the back, but Kolsch, Honey Wit, IPA, Gosa, Pancho Vila, which is a uh, chili beer and uh, wheat beer. different pouring a beer from the bottle and then uh, <laughs> pouring it on yeah. the tap. Oh, this is, this, she's, she's doing well. But Greg, are you there on the untapped? Untapped? Yes, we are not. I'll add you there. Yeah, good, good. I have to use that more often. Not bad. Not bad. Keep pouring though, a little bit more. Right oh. right the then you can pour it straight down the middle at this point. Keep, keep the nozzle out of the beer though. Because what happens, you don't want the beer to get kind of, um, yeah. Nice. Want to try? <laughs> so the one of the most important things about uh, pouring a good beer, and it, it, a little bit difficult to show right here, but is making sure that the glass is clean, a good clean glass. So we make sure that all our glasses are clean before we're pouring our beer, because what hap But what you what you don't want, you want the glass the, the the you know the glass to look nice and clean, no bubbles on the side. So that's a good representation from the coal shy poured. Uh, if, if there are any bubbles on the side of the glass, you know that it wasn't properly washed. Um, yeah, and as I said, pouring at a 45 degree angle and as it gets close to the top, slowly turning it uh, uh, level to level. And don't let the nozzle get in the... Anybody else want to try? Anybody else? Yeah? Wait, what, okay. You, you next. You next. Come. Okay, so take your pick. Yeah, this side. Yeah. All the way back. Tip it to the side. You could tip it even more. I think I just picked a lucky beer that didn't have as much froth. <laughs> This is the honey. honey beer. Okay, come. Hey, people are just kind of asking what case is it? So maybe you want to introduce yeah, the Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> come on back. So, hi folks in Facebook land. Uh, I'm Greg. I'm the uh, founder of the Barking Deer Brewery in Lower Perel. We're doing... Uh, Barking Deer Brew Pub, we're doing uh, a uh, Facebook live shoot, but we're also doing uh, beer school. We're teaching some uh, students how to be beer geeks. So we went through history, beer making, ingredients, uh, culture, and now we're uh, learning a little bit simply how to pour a beer, how to pour a good beer. What, what, what's, what sort of beer do you want to? Wit beer, okay. This is our Flying Pig Belgian Wit, so once again, start kind of, uh, you know, kind of 45 degree angle. As it gets close, you slowly turn it. 
and don't let the nozzle touch the beer. Yeah, and just you can pull it all the way back. Good. 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 She's a pro. <laughs> 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 All right. So yeah, any any questions out in Facebook land? Which one's your favorite beer as a brewer? Oh, that's a good question. Let's sign up with that. Sure. So I um I really may, maybe you could come around the side here and we can can point. So typically, I mean, I really love all beer, but, um, but there are certain ones that maybe I favor more than others. Um, I typically like our IPA a whole lot. It, it's a bigger, bolder, uh, more bitter beer, slightly higher in alcohol. Um, I'd say this is an American style of IPA. Um, so I really like the, um, I like the bitterness. I like kind of the fruitiness big flavors. Uh, we've, we've brewed this beer. Uh, we've brewed some double IPAs, which are even stronger. Uh, but when, when I'm like not kind of wanting something quite as bold, I'll go for something like this, which is a Kolsch, which is what I, what I poured just now is a Kolsch. Because it's, it's a much more simpler, straightforward beer, and yet it's still balanced. It's got the sweetness of the malt and, and, and the hop bitterness. Uh, so I tend to like some bitter, bitterness in my beer, where I seem, I seem to see a lot of the patrons here, they tend to like the less bitter beers, which are the, uh, the wheat beers, and the, uh, we have a, a honey beer, where is it, honey, honey braggot, which is a little, little less bitter, but um, it's still a beautiful beer, it's, it's just a little much more on the sweeter side. I, I tend to like beers that are more balanced in flavor. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's just, uh, I, I think I saw some saying, I, I, maybe, I don't know if I can say it right. It said, I, I drink a lot of water. Water filtered through barley malt <laughs> and, and water fermented. I drink a lot of beer. <laughs> Cheers to that. <laughs>